I haven't decided what to call this series yet, but something along the line of rough order of magnitude or back of the envelope, because very frequently in science, you end up just wanting to do a quick calculation, not very precise, not super accurate, just trying to find out if a thing is realistic or not. I do this all the time when I'm planning videos, and normally the process takes like two or three minutes, which is why they're gonna make good videos here. But as an example, the other night, after watching the most recent Stuff Made Here video, I spent probably maybe three hours of time that I should have been sleeping trying to determine if you could sharpen a pencil using sunlight. And in that case, the answer was probably not, but some of the assumptions that I were using were very suspect. Today, I want to start this series with a scene from Tears of the Kingdom, which is an absolutely amazing game, but, spoilers for the Rito Village plotline, when you beat the Wind Temple, there is a cutscene that plays where a whole bunch of snow melts at once. And when I saw that cutscene, I was fearing that Teba is probably going to be pretty well cooked by the time that Tulin and Link get home. <laughs> Ghost Tulin is creepy. You okay, let's head back to the village and tell Dad. Dad isn't bacon. Hmm? Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's what happens, and uh, water takes an awful lot of energy to vaporize. So the amount of energy that was being dumped into that landscape, presumably it wasn't being dumped exactly into the ice, although it's magic, so that's probably what was happening. Everything would have gotten fried. I'm going to assume that that was about six inches deep snow, which, you know, it seems kind of reasonable. And I want to go time that now, so... Let's say five seconds. In five seconds, we melt and evaporate uh, six inches of snow. So this is where you can have a lot of fun with dimensional analysis. You start with something like uh, six inches snow per five seconds, and we're going to end with a power. Ten inches of snow one inch of ice. So we're going to be really generous and we're going to assume that the ice started at zero degrees and that the vapor ended at 100 degrees. That means that we don't have any extra energy terms floating around in the solid or vapor. Make sure those units do what I think they do. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Using specific heat, use specific heat diffusion. But now this is in grams of ice, and we have inches of ice depth, which is not what we want. So we need the density of ice, which I'm going to approximate as the density of water, which is one gram per cc. I think that's all we need. I think that'll come out as a power density. Kilowatts per, yes, I got it right. Okay, so we're looking at, oh my god, <laughs> 1.2 kilowatts per square centimeter. That is a lot of power. <laughs> For reference, a toaster oven puts out about a kilowatt. So that means that you have a toaster oven's worth of power being dumped into this snow every centimeter. So the, the trick here is that we have to have ice. If we have ice at zero degrees Celsius, it has a certain amount of energy inside of it. 
if you heat that ice, you can melt that ice. And for that, you have to go through the heat of fusion, which takes it from ice at zero degrees Celsius to water at zero degrees Celsius. And then you need to add energy to the water in order to raise its temperature, which means that we take this specific heat of water times 100 degrees, which tells us how much energy water will have at 100 degrees. And then you need to vaporize that water. So you take water at 100 degrees and you turn it into vapor that's at 100 degrees. And that is the heat of vaporization. So you add all these things together and you figure out for every gram of water, we need to add 4,116 joules of energy to a gram of ice to turn it into a gram of steam, basically. Snow is significantly lower density than ice, so uh, you take six inches of snow divided by 10, cancel everything out, and you end up with a lot of power. <laughs> so Teba, the Rito, for perplexing reasons, are about human-shaped. So, I don't know, what, my head is about six inches across, my shoulders are about six inches. Well, let's assume that all this heat is radiating down from above. If he's just standing out there on the deck, let's assume that he's, I don't know, a circle that is 12 inches across. Okay, so Teba's head absorbed that much energy. As a first analogy, in that five second span, the top of Teba's head and shoulders that was absorbing all of this radiation uh, received the equivalent amount of heat that it would have if he stuck his head in a toaster oven for a little over an hour. About an hour and 15 minutes. So we're sort of doing this in reverse now. But if you take that amount of power and sit it on the top of Teba's head, then the top 28 millimeters of him evaporated, at least. But, you know, in the game, it's magic, and the heat only actually is absorbed by the snow that was magical snow that was created by the storm around the Stormwind Arc. Which means that Teba's actually fine. 